Hi, I'm Dr. Ashley Ross. I'm a urologist here with Northwestern Medicine. Recurrence after treatment for prostate cancer is usually defined initially by PSA. After surgery, the PSA should be undetectable, but it can raise to values that are detectable, and values above 0.03 should be suspicious for recurrence. The American Urologic Association defines 0.2 as the threshold where recurrence should be highly suspected. But really, for people with values of 0.03 or greater, in around five years, over 70% of them will have uh, recurrent disease by the AUA definition. If the first therapeutic approach fails by biochemical recurrence, uh, there's lots of evidence that acting on that early is going to allow for better outcomes. For most people who initially have what appears to be clinically localized disease, the progression of the disease will be from local to local regional to then to metastatic disease. And there is a window in which you can capture men after the initial treatment um, and treat them with subsequent therapies to cure. For people after surgery, if the PSA is rising, men treated before the PSA gets to 0.5 nanograms per mil have a much higher chance of cure by salvage radiation than those treated with PSAs at higher levels. In fact, for men treated at PSAs of 0.2 or below, they have an even a further increased chance of, of cure. After radical prostatectomy, if the PSA is elevated, that can be a sign of persistent or recurrent disease. For those men, when the PSA is low, uh, there's a large opportunity to treat them with what's called salvage radiation therapy. This that is a, a standard of care option. There used to be a debate about whether some men with adverse pathology after prostatectomy could benefit from adjuvant radiation therapy, meaning uh, radiation therapy when the PSA was completely undetectable versus an early salvage report uh, approach. There's now three clinical trials that suggest that you can wait till the PSA elevates prior to initiating treatment with salvage radiation. But again, you want to get that salvage radiation therapy done early, meaning when the PSA is at a lower uh, level to get the best chance of cure. Following uh, primary radiation therapy to the prostate, the disease can recur or persist, and those recurrences can be in multiple different areas. It can be within the prostate itself, or you can have disease outside of the prostate. When the PSA rises after radiation therapy, say to two nanograms per mil above the lowest points or above the nadir, uh, that mandates an evaluation. The evaluation should look for systemic disease spread. That can be done using PET imaging, for example, flucyclovine or oximin PET or PET PSMA. And the evaluation should also include a biopsy of the prostate. The biopsy of the prostate should, should sample the prostate and the seminal vesicles because that's a common site of recurrence. If there's no metastatic disease found and disease is found in the prostate, then there are salvage options that are well established to try to cure the disease that is within the prostate. Those options include ablative options, such as cryoablation, which uses freezing therapy, and also surgical removal of the prostate, such as salvage radical prostatectomy. The options can have different levels of morbidity, and obviously salvage treatments will be more morbid or cause more side effects than primary treatments. Salvage cryoablation has a much lower rate of um, incontinence than salvage radical prostatectomy has. Um, but there are selective patients with periurethral disease, or, or um, disease involving the seminal vesicles um, that may not be amenable to cure by cryoablation and need extirpative treatment. Again, there's three radical, uh, three randomized control trials that look at treatment with radiation after uh, radical prostatectomy. And for people with Gleason grade group two or three disease that have uh, only T3A, so um, extraprostatic extension, no lymph nodes involved, no seminal vesicle invasion, there's good evidence that we can wait till um, the PSA rises to 0.1 or 0.2 before eliciting a salvage therapy. For all the men getting salvage treatments, uh, genomics like the Decipher genomic test uh, can help us guide decision-making about use of hormonal therapy or not. And there's some recent analysis of one of the radiation therapy oncology group trials, 9601, showing that people with low Decipher 
uh, risk, which is a genomic risk, um, may not benefit from the addition of androgen deprivation therapy in the salvage setting. And in fact, it could harm their overall survival. For people after primary radiation therapy, I think that we have to aggressively monitor these men and know that there are options for cure if the radiation fails. Um, those options are best enacted upon at low PSAs. For men with intermediate and high-grade prostate cancer, a cure can often be elicited, but recurrences after the initial treatment can happen in 20 to 50% of cases. Being vigilant about washing PSAs after surgery or after radiation is important because intervening on these men at low PSA levels with either salvage radiation after surgery or salvage ablative therapies like cryoablation or salvage prostatectomy after radiation can allow for cure in about 70% or more of these patients if we're intervening early.